Right, so hello developers, good morning and welcome to another session with me, Varun on Tech Tablet. And in this session, we'll be looking at the object-oriented ABAP interview question and answer series, and this would be part four of it. So we've already covered the other three parts and we have another one or two parts remaining for the basic level, and then we would go on to the intermediate level, right? And if in case you have liked my videos, you can follow me on my Instagram and Facebook on the IDs mentioned below, which is Varunra underscore Gemini. And I also hope that you enjoy the presentation that's being made out of passion. For all those of you who do not know me, well, my name is Varun Rao. I work as an ABAP UI 5 Fury developer with around five years or nearing five years of experience. I have knowledge in HTML5, JS, XML, CSS3, uh, OData, ABAP, and I'm currently on uh, preliminary stages of gathering knowledge on IoT, AI, Python, machine learning, deep learning, and etc. either for data science or probably for Leonardo. And the agenda of this session would be to look at the interview question and answers, followed by understanding the basic concepts of object-oriented ABAP and also how to answer in an interview. Well, there was one mantra in an interview in, in interviews which was considered pretty successful, that is convince or confuse. But then, guys, to convince or confuse, we do not work in or we are not appearing for a BPO segment, firstly, and secondly. The person who's sitting right opposite to you or the person who's interviewing you is not there to get confused or, you know, I don't think it would be so easy to, you know, this quiver off because we're not talking, we're not playing a word game here. We are going for a development project and if you're trying to fake it, they would definitely make it, right? So please don't get into or please do not be in that false impression. So now going forward, the first question that we have is, is it mandatory to implement all the methods of interface in the class which include an interface? Well, that is not a mandate. If that's a you know, want, if you want to do it, you can do it. So it's not mandatory to implement all normal interface methods, but it is mandatory to implement all abstract methods and what are abstract methods they might contain an implementation or they might not contain an implementation so you know it depends second one is how can polymorphism be implemented there are three ways to do it the first one being method overriding method overloading followed by operator overloading so method overriding and overloading being two different processes and operator overloading being the third can we raise events in an interface? Is it possible? Well, you do not or you cannot raise events in an interface. Why? It's because interface, as we have you know, seen the definition of what an interface is in the previous video, there is no implementation that's available for an interface. But you can create an event in interface though, right? So you know, very tricky, very small and easy, yet uh, you know, confusing interview question. And it's good if you could prepare them perfectly. What is UML? Not to get confused with FML, this is UML. U UML is Unified Modeling Language. It's a standardized modeling language which is used for specification, construction, or you know, visualization and documentation of models. And these models are used for you know, software systems or probably for uh, you know, communication between users and stuff like that. All right, the next is, the next question that we have is, what is a singleton? So it is basically a class which allows you to have only one object at a time, not more than that. And when you do this, or you know, when you use a singleton, it basically is defined with an addition of you know, create private and a finally. And the, these are instantiated you know, using their own static constructor. We don't have to do anything here. And a public static component, which is also found, could be then you know, made the reference to the class which is already available. And this class is available to the external user, right? Or this reference to the class is available directly to the external user. The next question is, what is a narrowing cast and how do you implement it? Well, uh, the, the assignment of a subclass instance to a reference variable of the type reference to superclass 
is described as an arrow in cast right and what is this or, or you know why it is because you are basically switching from a more detailed view to a lesser detailed view so so you can say in in layman language that it is trying to you know hide things by giving them a reference variable and these reference variable are given to the super class and so basically you're just narrowing your cast you know it's just as simple as understanding english seventh one is how to create an object for a private class well in general we cannot or yeah i mean not only in general most of the times we cannot create object for a private class but we can access you still have the option of accessing the static method for a private class this can be done so call the method using its class name and import the object so when you use the class name and then you import the object itself you would be able to do it for example you can take one static method with an exporting parameter please you know go through this example carefully one static method can be taken with one exporting parameter and this static method would be inside the private class and we would write the object creation code within the static method only and then finally this entire object would be exported so that can be done now what is widening cast this is exactly opposite to you know narrowing cast and talking about widening cast it's basically you know with interface and here it is used to you know retrieve the classes from an inter from an interface reference so you get more and more classes the next one is what is a dereferenced variable well to get an address before performing an operation a dereference variable acts as a pointer to the variable but it is not a variable in itself so it is to basically get an address before an action is performed now a pointer now what is a dereference variable you know now now we are saying that it acts as a pointer to the variable right so we just understand what what a pointer is and what it can do so basically a pointer can be reassigned any number of times it, it's not just for once and you know while you are trying to reassign this any number of times reference cannot be reassigned after initialization so basically field symbols are very similar to dereference points or sorry dereference pointers now you can also access the content of the object or you know the content of the data with respect to the object to which the field symbols point and if you want to access the content of the data object you need to dereference the data reference first so basically whenever you want to access the content of an object that created you need to dereference the variables first the tenth one is define polymorphism well this is a hardcore object oriented concept as we all know it in this language or in this programming language uh, it is basically assigning a different meaning to a particular symbol or operator and polymorphism in greek means having multiple forms poly is multiple morphosis is you know change of or shape or change of form so it is multiple forms so you know that's it, it's exactly a literal translation of that language right so a simple example is when two classes inherit from a common parent and implement the same virtual methods with you know different actions or with, with different uh, behavior this is what is called as or this is what is referred to as polymorphism so it's basically one body having multiple characteristics or multiple features and being able to perform differently in different circumstances right and polymorphism inheritance all encapsulation these are very important concepts of object oriented so it's good if you have strong hold on these right so these are the 10 questions that i have for you in this video or in this presentation in the upcoming video we will be looking at a lot more now if you like the video and if you feel that it's useful for you and your friends i would request you to hit the like button and also the share button because if this is being useful at least for a few then i think the objective is achieved thanks a lot to each and every one for being there this is me varun logging off with an expectation that you have learned something new and that you have also enjoyed watching 
and that you would also stay tuned because there's a lot yet to be exchanged between us. Have a great day out there and also all the best for the interview that you're about to take up.